Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome back to Oblivion. Well, last time, we bought the world's worst house, and finally figured out the levelling system. Well, kind of, anyway. But today, our greatest adventure of all begins. There is a road dead ahead of me over there. That road leads to Iverstead, and today, that's where we're going. We're going to Iverstead, let's flip and go, though admittedly, on the way... I did say I was going to check out, yeah, this little village right here, way there is an inn, probably therefore there's an innkeeper, and probably therefore there's some goblins, rats, gremlins, etc. that need murdering. And even if not, this lady is probably selling food, and food, that's just a way of making sandwiches, and sandwiches, that's just a polite name for potions. Welcome to the Warnet Inn. Could I interest you in a room, or perhaps a bit of wine? Okay, no wine, just food, please. Though actually, by any chance to say your husband being kidnapped, your son missing? Okay, nothing as far as I can see, but... Apparently I can ask after the wine. Maybe the wine here is super good. Yes, actually I'm quite fond of collecting all manners of wines from all over Tamriel. But one vintage continues to elude me. Shadow Banish wine. How I'd love to add it to my collection. Say, that gives me an idea. You look like the adventuring type. If you can retrieve six bottles of Shadow Banished wine, I'll gladly pay you well. All I know about them is that they're found in the many fort ruins scattered all over Cyrodiil. Okay, bit of a low-stakes mission, but I'll flip in take it. I do enjoy diving into an odd fort here and there regardless, so, okay, tell me more, why would there just be a particular vintage just in forts? Was it just for soldiers, say? Well, apparently the wine is so rare because it was only made in one tiny batch. It's the product of an alchemist who was also a vintner. Besides tasting incredible, the magic within the wine allows the imbiber to be gifted with night eye. The vintner made it special for the Legion soldiers posted at the forts when they were active long ago. It was perfect for keeping lookouts warm on cold nights and helping them see better in the dark. Clever, eh? You know what? That does actually make sense. That is pretty clever. Though, yeah, I have checked out a few of these forts. I've not seen any of this yet. Though, maybe it doesn't spawn till I've spoken to her. Oh, I was just getting her disposition up so I could just buy and sell some bits and pieces. I assume my persuasion just hit 25, so now I'm an apprentice. When persuading a character, you get one chance to rotate the wedges without having to select an action. Okay, that's going to make the game much easier. Because sometimes, yes, some orientations of wedges and likes and dislikes can make it very difficult to have an optimal single conversation. So it could be quite slow to max somebody. That's going to make life much easier. Okay, time to actually check with numbers how good Operation Turn Food into Sandwiches actually is in terms of, yeah, making money. So I'm just going to buy all this food right here. And this is going to be, yeah, two, two right then. Chance I could get this down to maybe one. She's apprentice. Disposition is not that high. Capped out. No. I'm guessing, yeah, when you're dealing with things of this low value, there's barely any point haggling. You're not really going to save much. Buy everything she's got right here. In particular, That's yeah, the deal. cheaper, the better. So that got me down to two golds. And this here, because yes, everything I bought was the Restore Fatigue stuff. This must be what she gave me. So what we do is just mix that together. Now, is mixing any more stuff in any way advantageous? Because... Uh, to be honest, no, it's not making the potion better or in any way, yeah, more valuable. So just get all that together, blend you two together. Corn and grapes, appalling combination right there. Admittedly, the, oh yes, the hammer appears to be doing the same thing right there. Lovely. So put all that together, though I've also got, hang on, what's, what's this? Ooh, damage willpower. Okay, that's pretty good right there. Burden... Wait, Burden? Oh, that's Burden as well. Burden 16 points. Okay, I feel like, yes, using a potion to burden my enemies, that's that's not really what I'm looking for. No, damaging willpower, 
one point for four seconds. Okay, I'm not very good at, uh, yes, potion chest. Leave that for the time being. Oh, that'll do, though. St. John's Wart Nectar, that was just outside a yellow flower. And the lotus seeds, which are everywhere in the Imperial Capital, that makes me poisons. Now, that's good, because, yes, that goes nicely on arrows. So get that moving in the right direction. Lovely. Now, I'm pretty sure what I just made was these potions right here. So six and seven points of fatigue. Seven of them. Sell all of them. 30 gold. Sell you for 44. I've, like, doubled my money. I started off with, uh, what was it, 32. And my alchemy's got better. So, okay, every time I pass an in, I should buy literally every food they've got, squish them together into incredibly unappetizing sandwiches, then sell them back to the same person who just sold me the food. Brilliant. So, as I was saying earlier, today we're going to go and find some wine. Okay, no quest markers, but... If they were given to Imperial Legionaries at Old Forts, then logically, the forts I've already passed might have them inside. It's just, yeah, I'm not sure I really bothered going into the basements of these here forts. Or maybe I didn't explore them well enough, I'm not sure. You know, stranger, there comes a time in every man's life when he has to admit that he's lost the fight. Well, I've fought and I've lost. Who did I lose to? Who is my great enemy? Oh, don't laugh. It's a bunch of damn fish. Oh, okay. I think I just met my soulmate outside, because I'm going to be honest, mate. I've got a bit of a vendetta against fish, too. One beat me up back when I was only level one. Go on and... Wait. Help? Oh, well, then. I'm a fisherman. Or at least I was. Until one of those slaughterfish damn near took my leg off. I was collecting their scales, see? I had a contract with this young alchemist. You wouldn't believe what he was paying for those scales. Then, last month, one of the bastards got a hold of my leg. Took me right out of the business. But this alchemist, he needs the scales right away. The alchemist was paying so much for the scales that I'm close to having enough saved so that I can retire. But now I can't get out there to the lake. Not with this leg. I only needed 12 more scales. Can you believe it? I was so close. I've picked up a few things in my travel. If you head out there and bring me back the 12 scales that I need, I can make it worth your time. Help an old fisherman out, won't you? Oh, I absolutely will. So, okay, if I'm passing by water, maybe just use the detect life spell, then get in there, take out the slaughterfish, grab the scales, and try and remember not to use them in crafting. Gotcha. Oh, this is... This is nice. I like this. Sometimes I just like, you know, playing a nice RPG, walking into a village, and it's not the end of the world. All right, the oblivion gates aren't about to open. I mean, they are somewhere, but it's not my business right now. I'm just having a lovely time wandering around collecting wine and fish. Brilliant. Well, all right. If she just lives over there and she said, check out old Imperial forts. Well, Fort Empire's got to be a good place to start. Yeah, I passed through here previously when I was just taking out a couple of imps to boost up my beautiful, beautiful marksman skill. And nothing outside as far as I can tell, but yeah, there's often a mini dungeon attached to this place. So in we go. Let's just murder anyone stupid enough to live here and make off with their wine. Though while we're passing through, of course, check out my new abilities like, say, yes, electric touch. Boom. Love it. So, okay, I could just electrocute rats now. Better and better. Take the meat. The meat can be converted into potions. Potions are really good money. So, okay, who else lives here, by the way? Because it might just be rats on this occasion. I'm not sure. Oh no, looks like we've got imps over there. I see your little fluttering wings. Uh, I might be able to get round the back of you. And everything I know about video games says uh, electricity, good against flying enemies. Also, how good is this? Ooh, not bad. Not bad at all. You might be able to heal a little bit, buddy. I'm not sure. Blunt going up. That's good. Fortified personality might be useful as a potion thing. Okay. Deeper and deeper. We seem to be very much under control uh, for the time being. All right, bit of a bigger one than sometimes. Uh, two doors down below, both of which go to the barracks block. So, all right, 
if I was looking for wine that was being served to uh, soldiers, uh, barracks doesn't seem like a terrible place to start off with. All right, keep an eye on all of this. Maybe practice my aim a bit too. Yeah, how much drop-off are we dealing with here? At that range about there? Not bad. Well done. I'm getting used to this. And, uh, oh yeah, more of them over there. Let's just put a little bit of damage. No, no, no. No, you don't. Let's get out the good stuff here. Steel short sword. Let's go. Shield is useless against this, I'm assuming. Take you out, buddy. I see you over there. Okay, so flying imps are magic -y people, which can be a bit dangerous, actually. But yes, my own touch is actually pretty good. That's, that's highly effective. Though bear in mind, it does mean, yes, I can't actually use my healing spell as much. So I am draining my own magic here. Oh, and la -de da I have hit the jackpot here. So, base ring of intelligence, fortify intelligence, six points. That feels like a lot, John. It's not that much, because yes, a single level can increase intelligence by five. It's still pretty good. Some decent uh, scrolls, uh, greater soul gem, currently filled with uh, lesser, lesser, filled with nothing, inefficient soul gem use there, gold, uh, Okay, well, this was worth it just for the rings, even if I get nothing else out of this. Now, how many rings can I wear at the same time, by the way? Well, so far I'm wearing Ring of Protection, Ring of Intelligence, and that's not a ring. Good, though, oh, that replaces my... Wait, is that a ring? Okay, I think it's a ring. I mean, it looks like a ring in terms of the picture, so okay... Two rings, one on each hand. So that one is, yes, elemental resistance, actually pretty useful. Right now, the imps are using fire on occasion. And that intelligence, that's not bad. And there we go, boosted up to 51. Lovely, presumably giving me bonus mana. So yeah, Magicka right now is 102 points. If I take that off, 90. That's a big increase. And that's it, just a simple loop, so... No actual sign of the wine I was after, but I will say the ring makes it worthwhile right there. Plus, we did get a whole bunch of organs out of these imps that might be useful for potion making. Ah, you see, now this is looking better already. I am 4 out of 10 on the way to level 4, and already I've got a good selection of skills already up to plus 3. And thank you, by the way, to the people in the comments who let me know... Luck just can't be increased. Luck is just plus one. So if you want to really double down on luck, you've just got to accept you're increasing something by five, something by five, and something by one. Which is kind of useful in a way, because yeah, if I ever come across a level where I've got two plus fives, but I'm just not in a good position to boost something else up, then I could take two fives and luck at one, and that would be just fine. So, okay, good thing to know. Okay, no joy in the wine, but as for the fish, well, I could use my mysticism to detect life, but, 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 this being a Bethesda game, there is, of course, a much easier way to detect life if it's underwater, which is, uh, there is just a perfect spot, there we go, where you can just see what's under the water without going into the murk filter right there. Honestly, I'm not seeing many fish, so, ooh. What I am seeing, though, is... Oh, hello, old friend! From Skyrim, right there. Ooh. Okay. So, apparently, this thing is really important. Bring it to an alchemist. Find out more about it. Almost every city in Cyrodiil. Okay. The exciting, sexy stuff has been located. Together with... Uh, whatever this is. Water Hyacinth. So, yes. Get some sacred lotus. Get all of this free alchemy right here. Okay, we're going to go to Iverstead in just a second, but I do know where the alchemy store is in town. I believe it's one of the, yes, obscure shops, kind of uh, hidden around the corner, and uh, main ingredient, that's got to be it. Any friend of the society is a friend of mine. Have a look around. Oh yeah, the shopkeepers love me because of what I did. Brilliant and uh, perfect. Buddy, this root I just found. How interesting. I've heard of these glowing roots, but never had the fortune of seeing one. Unfortunately, I know nothing about them. You want to speak to Cinderian of Skingrad. 
He's an alchemist over there who specializes in unusual plants, fungi, and roots. Okay, so if ever made my way to Skingrad, speak to the alchemist there. Gotcha. And while I'm here, yeah. Health potions are a little bit on the low side because food restores fatigue, not health. So I will gladly take cheap stuff that lets me do health potions, absolutely. Together with anything that damages health, because yes, poisons for arrows, that's pretty good too. Okay, so, here we go. Journey to Iverstead, it's about to happen. Now, there is admittedly one missing part of my epic hero's mission, and that is a noble steed. And I thought I might be able to sort that out, given there are some stables right outside the starting city, except, um... I think I may have missed something, so let's talk all about the things that John can't even bloody figure out, because I can't figure out how to buy a horse. Like, the stables, and there's horses. Like, so, so many horses, and I've spoken to all these people, but none of them will sell me a horse. So, I'm not 100% sure where horses come from, but yes, I can't actually... Okay, wh why are you chasing me? Look, if it's to sell me a horse, I do want to buy one. I think we're misunderstanding each other. But as you can see, he just has completely generic chat. There's no, hey, can I buy a horse option. He's so determined to not sell me a horse, he's willing to chase me out of his bloody stable. So, okay. Okay, okay, okay. It's time for us to be on our way. Road to Iverstead, let's go. All right, we're going for Choral. Just make sure, yes, using the signs, I'm on the right road. Oh, but that direction is uh, Skingrad, uh, Kvatch, and uh, Anvil. Now, we know about Anvil. Something about a prophecy, end of the world. Uh, yeah, priest gone a bit bananas. Uh, Skingrad, uh, that's what we need for, yes, the alchemy. I mean, that's not the road I'm supposed to be going down. How far down that road do these cities, just out of interest? Oh, quite a long way. Actually, Skingrad is at first on the road. Uh, Kavach beyond it, then Anvil right on the coast. So, okay. I suspect the shape of the map is... Uh, yeah, this bit at the north. This is, like, the early game stuff, where the end of the world seems to be pretty close by. Oh, there's Skyrim. Lovely. Right. So, I'm guessing we're going south. After we're done with uh, some basic stuff up north. Meaning somebody's going to send me to Bruma sooner rather than later. Oh yeah, Choral's nice and close by. And then we could take the orange road uh, round to Bruma. See what's going on at the top of the uh, yeah big hills around here. So okay, let's not get distracted. Choral. Alright, and also... Okay. Shadinal. Can't remember if anybody's mentioned Che Dinal so far. So, uh, yeah, don't go there for the time being. This is the road we want, straight into the forest. So, uh, weapons out, magic ready to go. We are going to be fine. And while we're just pottering along, no reason not to, yes, practice my alteration. So, uh, just, you know, keep protect on me all the time. Keep an eye out for ruins, landmarks, anything of interest, admittedly. In a forest, it's going to be difficult to see one way or the other. So maybe, yeah, get up to high ground at some point. But, oh, hello. Are you just a random person? Yes, you're just a random bandit. Okay, just give me a second. I need to protect myself. Okay, now I'm protected, you stupid loser. And give me a bit of block damage, actually. There we go. Keep on blocking, buddy. Okay. Oh, he healed. What a bastard. Okay, back off. Back off. Keep with the protection. Maybe it's time to, yes, bring up something a bit bigger. Like, say... Oh, my bow dagger. That was fun. Or reinforcements. No, not soothing touch. Well, then again, actually, you know what? Yes, soothing touch. So you, buddy, are now chill. Meaning I've got a moment to just uh, do a bit of healing. Lovely. And then I can start hitting you again, and screw you, half your health meter's gone. Lovely. Get a bit of block in. Lovely. I assume your one potion's gone. Down you go, you stupid loser. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. Ooh, fur gear. That's a lot lighter than my gear, and weight is still a problem. Lockpicks. I am desperately shy of lockpicks. It's a real problem. You know what? I will leave the fur gear for now. I'm taking enough damage as I go. And yeah, don't forget, you can just wait 
waiting a single hour gets me, like, everything back, including my health, which I assume represents the fact there's, like, very slow passive regeneration. So, can I wait now? I can, though time is getting on a bit. Maybe just use uh, the healing. Alright, keep on keeping on. Possibly that bandit came from... Uh, yeah, random cave up here. Just hop up. Pick the monk shoot. Oh, hello. And tick cave. And you've immediately started doing something. I feel like this person wants to fight... But can't get to me, which is marvellous. So, okay, you want to protect? I can also protect. Screw you and... Oh! Ah, I understand. You're a summoner, aren't you? And you've summoned someone to help out. And I can just... Oh! Oh, there's, there's more of you. Okay, sorry. There, there were more of you here than I was expecting. Well, screw you. I bet you've got, like, no armour. No, you've got no armour. And if I kill, yes, you, then your imp friend disappears. Just watch out, because there's... Oh, he's... There's quite a few of them. Okay, this is this is a bit tougher. John, this is why we bring the potions. All right. Potions are absolutely A-OK. -okay. Do a little bit of healing. Maybe weak healing, weak everything. There we go. Just get in. If you can just hit him with a sword, he'll go down in like no time whatsoever. And then his summon disappears. Okay. If you see someone dressed in blue, they're a conjurer. They're way more common than they were back in Skyrim. And they are going to summon... Friends. Potentially dangerous friends. So, yeah, loot the bodies, good potions. Gotcha. Quite possible this was where you guys were just hanging out. Yes, there appears to be a lot more conjuration. It was a fairly rare skill back in Skyrim, but uh, these days apparently everyone's doing it. There's just roving bands of conjuration bandits. Well, I'm going to be honest, you guys started it. So now at this point, I'm afraid you all need to die. I bet you would love to summon your friend to actually help out. But you can't do that if you're dead. Marksman. That's my key. Oh, hello. Okay. I can... Oh, oh, this is the stuff. I can replace my stolen gear with an actual good gear. I love it. And also more and more money. Brilliant. Okay. Just out of interest, which bits have I got... That are still stolen. Because, yes, I've got these two. I need the Alembic and the Calcinator. Do you guys have an Alembic? There's a Calcinator. And Alembic. So if I get rid of you and get rid of you. None of this is stolen anymore. This is all my own gear. Because taking this stuff off you, that is legit. Nobody cares about that. Brilliant! Now I won't lose it if I get arrested for the various crimes I'm almost certainly going to commit. One thing I do find very interesting about Oblivion, by the way, is yes, the level design is vastly different from Skyrim. Like, Skyrim dungeons are overwhelmingly a straight line. Okay, there's a Skyrim door, there's maybe a bit of doubling back on yourself, but mostly it's a linear path with various traps and enemies in the way going from entrance to boss. And it seems to be completely different in Oblivion. The levels are very often really just kind of rambling all over the place. Often multiple doors down to the next level. Loops, rings. It's much more maze-like. It's really interesting. Still, I will say, next to basic bandits, Conjuration Majors make excellent hunting. One, they're easy to kill, especially for a bow specialist. And two... If you can kill them before they wake up, better and flipping better. You're just a random goblin, aren't you? Yes, yes you are. Okay, we'll just run and take you out. Some of you just don't disappear after, yes, your summoner has been killed, which is a bit on the peculiar side. Maybe you're just a pet wild imp who is, you know, a da- Oh, blimey. Okay, he's a little bit on the tougher side than I was expecting. There you go. They're not nothing. They may be- Uh-oh. I feel like things are about to go wrong, actually. Like, potentially very wrong. Okay, just get a bit of health back. If that was just a conjurer, then they have a habit of just, yes, YOLO charging me. Which is brilliant, because they've got no armor. So, okay, where are you, buddy? No, that was just another bloody goblin dero flipping dear. Come back here, you. Just stay here. Stay here and get yourself nice and murdered. There you go. You can do as much as you want, but as soon as you're dead... Blade skill's going up, though. Okay, I need to, uh, yes, watch that. 
And that's the thing. They're swimming in potions. They go down easy and they are swimming in potions. It's brilliant. Oh yeah, we're almost there. 8 out of 10, so okay. It's time to start picking what we want to go up. So intelligence and speed seem like good candidates. Willpower is... Yeah, destruction, alteration. Those I should be able to boost pretty easily, especially alteration if I just keep protecting myself. So... Then again, I'm going to be honest, I would not mind having access to, yeah, more strength. Because that's carry capacity and I really feel like I'm lacking that right now. So, yeah, trying to get my hand-to-hand -hand up against a soft enemy might not be a bad idea. Go over to Blunt for the time being. Let's get that and hand-to-hand -hand going in the right direction. For intelligence, that means, oh, that's easy. Alchemy or a bit of mysticism when it comes to it. No trouble at all. That's not to be worried about. Speed, athletics, light armor. Okay, don't block. Just let yourself get hit. And if worst comes to worst, yes, luck. We've always got that as a backup. Oh, and my armor is in terrible condition. That's probably why I was taking so much damage. Okay, let's get this back up to... Good condition right here. Good. I'm getting through the hammers a bit on the uh, the fast side, mind. But we are where we are. And darn it, that's armor. I didn't want armor to go up. Armor is a core skill. That means we're now up to bloody 9 out of 10. Okay, so now I've got to keep myself to, yes, the stuff I need to boost. Gotcha. Okay, which major skill do we need to be scared of here? Honestly, they're all pretty far off. Blade's the closest, so just don't use blade. Uh, conjuration is uh, miles off. Don't worry about acrobatics. Okay. I can even use my bow a bit more if I need to, though uh, not that much. Okay. Bow and blade are out of circulation for the time being. Blunt and destruction. Let's do it. So nice, blunt axe, sneak up behind a little goblet, sneak up behind little sneak, never mind, we didn't sneak up behind little goblin, don't mind me, don't mind me, we're just going to have an electric off, it's going to be fine, actually I think I do better in an electric off, okay I'm out of mana, really need to, yes, look at that, they just, yeah when they come swinging with their claws, they're not nothing, these guys are actually getting a bit tougher, Scamps is their name officially. Okay, everything's everything's fine aside from the fact yes, I'm running on. Oh blimey! Okay, he saw me a bit fast. Weak potion of healing is not the worst thing in the world. And bear in mind, I should have. A, yeah, screw it. I've got some poison. Put some poison on the old axe. Let's flip in and go. Jumped over your thing. You're going to take damage over time, buddy. And that's actually going to help out a lot. Bit of damage over time. I won't say no. Brilliant. And that is, uh, yes, it's loops. There's an awful lot of loops in this game. You kind of, yeah, do the first area. Then you've got a choice of uh, two doors going into the second. Though, I think going the longer way to get the second door might be supposed to, like, get you round the back. And thus enemies are facing away from you. So it's a bit easier to get the sneak attacks. I'm not sure, though. Okay, back to the road, which was... Gonna be honest, I'm not 100% sure. That would appear to be the road down there. So I think it must be going up. Because I was going, yes, westward. So okay. If I just go over here. There we go. We found the road. So join back up to the road here. Now using blunt weapons. No trouble. No trouble at all. Looks like there's going to be a small fort on the way. Honestly, it shouldn't be too much of a big deal. That's the cave we've already done. So, okay. May as well just uh, clear that out. Might be a bit of good loot floating around in a tiny fort. The woman did mention... Oh, sorry. And my light armor skill just went up. Didn't really mean for that. John. John, John, John. Well, that's block. That's good. Okay. Skills that are minor. Moving in the right direction. If you run into minor stuff, start punching it. All right. Getting my, uh, yeah, strength up. Fort Ash. The angry music. Oh, it is the angry music. Okay, this is this is fine. All I need to do is, John, just put it away. There we go. Start punching. There we go. Screw you, you stupid bastard. Just heal up, punch. If it's nothing but rats, brilliant. We can just punch all of them to death. Okay. I don't know what happened here, but upstairs, uh, there's a couple of dead goblins. 
and some really, really valuable jewels. Possibly, yeah, they were supposed to have uh, found some good jewels in this fort and then killed each other over them. I'm not 100% sure. So, all right. Up to the top floor. Nothing too dramatic far as I can see. Oh, yeah. This here. This is goblin territory. You can always tell because of the little, uh, yeah, skulls. Now, basic goblins. How punchable are they? I mean, bare minimum. We've got to be in a good position in terms of, uh, yes, sneaking. Surely punchers uh, gain benefits from, uh, yes, good old uh, sneak attacks. And that's like six bonus. So, uh, okay, sneak up on goblins, uh, punch them. That's the plan, though. Okay, John. John, John, John. How's mysticism looking? So I know we don't normally use mysticism, despite it being one of my major things. At 26, not even close. Okay. In that case, we're going to start using that right now. Because that, that's going to be useful. Set that to, yeah, one of my shortcuts. And now, use it right now. How much does that boost that? Quite a bit, actually. Okay, so now I can see where there are all. Oh, well, there's something there. There's, there's something down on the ground. Is it just, it's just a rat. The problem is it kind of gets in the way. The, uh, yes, detect life spell gets in the way of the life you're detecting, which is just marvelous, it must be said. So, okay, just keep on keeping on. Keep checking for trouble. There's something there. Now that, that's a living thing. I don't want to take on two of them at the same time. I feel like two of them at the same time would be bad. Okay, that's blunt. We definitely have to blunt for that, right? Yes, I feel like blunt is the uh, the right option. So if we can just... Okay, you're definitely aware of me, aren't you? Would you like to come up here? Because if you would, then yeah, one at a time, I'm willing to just punch you. So come on, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Go, 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 go. Punch him. John, don't, 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 however, be crouching. Hand to hand, going up. Brilliant. Go, go, go. Oh, yeah. Oh, flipping, yeah. This is it. This is the thing. This was the perfect enemy to find when I needed to boost my hand to hand. Because these are just basic crappy goblins. And I know there was another one. Hello over there. Right. So, yeah, hand to hand. Let's cocky go, mate. Let's flip it go. In fact, you know what? You're using a mace. I'm not. And I'm still kicking your ass. Dear, oh, flipping dear. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Round the back of Goblin. Yeah, you're expecting me to come in that door, aren't you? And then go! Six times damage off a punch. Yes! Yes! I'm so good at punching Goblins. Hand to hand is just flying up to. I'll be taking lockpicks. Okay, Goblins provide lockpicks, which is great because I need those because I'm really bad at the security minigame. Oh, I might be down to some tougher goblins here. These ones are doing a lot more damage to me, actually. Okay, hang on. We might we might have a problem. What are you precisely? Because I think we've run into, yes, a tougher, tougher variant of, uh, of goblin here. This feels like this isn't a place where I should be using uh, hand to hand. So how about we just try and... You're basic, aren't you? Yes, you're fine. We can take you out. That's no problem. And then magic you, if you'd be so... Just keep punching, keep punching. Oh, this is definitely a tougher type of goblin. It's going to be to the wire. Fortunately, I can shoot lightning out of my hands and he can't. Okay, right. What, what are you? Goblin skirmisher. Okay, watch out for the ones in hats and armor. Also, there's clearly still something detecting me, which could be a problem. Because now I've got no health and no magic. Okay. This is, this is a bit of an issue, actually. Okay, goblins, they're not nothing. Basic goblins are fine. Run up to them, punch them in the face. No trouble at all. Oh, it's the rats. Good. There's some rats and a rat farm. That's nice. I like it when it's not just, you know, generic cave with bandits or whatever. There's actually, like, you know, a function to the cave that you can figure out if you pay attention. That's lovely. Right there. So, okay. Rats, 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 rats. Would you mind helping me out with the whole leveling up thing? Okay, there's got to be... There's a gate somewhere. Right, there we go. Open that and... Go, 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 go. If I get killed by these rats now, this is going to be extraordinarily embarrassing. Hang on, where'd you just go? I'm being outwitted by a rat. Go. One more, I think. And keep on punching. Lovely. Okay. 
that's all of that by the looks of it, but how are we doing on the old level? Oh, perfect. Strength, plus five. So, yes, the unarmed worked brilliantly. Speed, plus five. Spectacular. Now I just need to pick whether I want it to be intelligence or willpower that goes up. So, yes, intelligence is how hard the spells hit by the Luke of it and number of MP. Mana regeneration is fine, but is it ever going to be important enough that, yeah, I would choose it over just more mana? I'm not sure it is, you know, but then again, ooh. Intelligence for now, I'd say. And that means alchemy, conjuration, mysticism. So, okay, we need to find some stuff to alchemy. Though, to be honest, we may have enough stuff right now. I mean, I've got a whole bunch of, uh, yes, various potions, so damage fatigue. Go! Let's just start that moving in the right direction. I'm pretty sure I just heard the noise right there. Damage intelligence and... Uh, oh, I didn't just use the scales, did I? Hope I didn't just use the scales. I wasn't supposed to use the scales. Uh, the scales are supposed to be... No, I didn't use the scales. It's fine. And there we go. I thought I heard the alchemy noise. So in which case, all I need to do is boost conjuration or mysticism. So I'd say conjuration. At this point, simply get that ticking along. Make sure that happens next. So, in which case, I just need to find... Uh, well, okay. Two easy ways we can do that, actually. Number one, don't forget, Bound Dagger is actually, like, your most powerful weapon. And don't forget Zombie Friend. He's going to think you don't love him anymore. And you do. He's magnificent. So, uh, alright, just get myself healed up as we head out. Then we just find some wolves who need to be murdered. Also, once again, no sign of that wine. I feel like that woman sending me on a random goose chase because- Pay up or else. Okay, who? Who are you precisely? Okay, just random highway murder. I'm going to be honest, my friend. I was literally looking for an opportunity to summon a zombie and a dagger from a hell and use them. So you have picked a bad, bad moment to approach me. So okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Back inside the thing, summon zombie friend, go over to dagger, and then, no you don't buddy, no you flipping don't, no you flipping don't, where's zombie friend? Uh, light armor's going up, go, 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 oh he wasn't even that tough, oh no, oh this is just sad. Yeah, take a swing at me, I need my flipping, oh dear. Oh, flippin' dear. You better have some money on you. No money. Apparently, he was a very unsuccessful highwayman. Maybe today was his first day. Oh, and I think that was it, by the way. I just summoned another dagger. And uh, athletics goes up, but more importantly... Okay, there's also... There's just a police officer here. Okay, you would have been useful, like, five minutes ago. Okay, no sign of a choral, but I'm going to be honest. This here... This was the level where I became a homeowner. So I want to level up in my home, damn it. Oh yes, and something important to check. So the equipment I left in this box over here. Oh my goodness, it appears to be all still here. Even the... Wow, it's all still here. That's amazing. Okay, you know what? It may be a shack by a river that is blatantly not even in the bit of the city that's not in a city. But the people who live here are good, honest folks. This is a nice neighbourhood. Right, it is 5pm, so I would say, yes, let's have a nice, good, long sleep here. May as well see if I get... Wait. Is well-rested a thing in this game? I've just got so used to well-rested being a thing in Bethesda games that I don't even check anymore. But, more importantly, as I wake up, boom, right there. And I think I know precisely what I want to do. Speed is just going to keep going up forever. Intelligence, that's good. And strength. Hardly like, you know, the top priority for me. But to be honest, I mainly just want the carry capacity. Because that is becoming a faff to deal with. And there we go. Level 4 in my very own terrible, terrible house. And there we go. 135 out of 200. Much, much better. Oh, that's, that's lovely. And on top of that, we're now up to, oh yeah, looking good here. So if I now return to Fort Ash, which I'm happy to do because I have actually been there on foot, looks like that's about maybe 
halfway to, yes, the area I'm trying to get to. So take a right out of here. We're almost there. We're actually going to do it, okay? I am not going to get distracted by anything en route. I'm pretty sure that might be the silhouette of a building up there in Choral. Put the weapon away, because yes, I move faster when I do not have that away. Ooh, brand new plants. Okay, that makes sense. So uh, different biomes uh, means different plants. Seriously, these roads are ridiculous. I love how they're not even remotely flat or straight or anything. We've also got Lily Nectar right there. Sometimes the game does stutter a bit, by the way. I'm not sure what causes the stuttering, but it does stutter on occasion. And something moved over there. But the game isn't playing the you're about to be attacked music for the time being in a... Oh, no. That's not Choral, is it? By any chance is this... Oh, it's just a farm. That's not a tavern. That's A-OK. -okay. And uh, St. John's Wart. That's good. That can be used in either poisons or the other thing. Healing potions. Either's good. I will be taking all of your blackberries, by the way. Because this here... Oh, tomatoes too. Oh, this is... This is good stuff. And in Bethesda games, no one minds if you steal their entire harvest. It's great. So I'll be taking all of your radishes. Uh, some of them are not ready to go yet, but it's all A-OK. -okay. Don't bother with uh, the watermelons. Uh, okay, that's got to be some nice, easy, beautiful alchemy right there. Mix radish with blackberry. Amazingly terrible sounding potion there, but apparently it'll do the job. Then tomato, not a good combination either. To be honest though, ooh. Now we're getting into potions uh, that do uh, two things at once, though. Don't mix restoration uh, with uh, damage. Gotcha. And at that point, I can mix in... Uh, oh, my. Then we're getting into... Okay, that's how you have potions uh, with multiple effects in this game. You pick your two base, then you start adding uh, more in, and you're chaining them effectively. You create a chain of ingredients. I see. Well, there's 18 Restore Fatigue potions worth 18 each. That's... that's good money, damn it. Okay, maybe I should go before the farmer realises what I've done. Oh yeah, this is not a farmer who really wants a protagonist to come inside and say, Hey, any chance you need someone rescuing murdered, etc? No, 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 there's... ooh. What's going on up there? Oh, I bet that's the outskirts of Choral. Oh my, I think we've made it. I think I've actually made it. Okay, there were some distractions en route, but I think I've actually made it to Iverstead in a single journey, kind of. There were some mild interruptions and whatnot, but for the most part, it was fine. I mean, they said, uh, find a priory. That, to me, looks like a priory. Like, I'm no expert on priories, uh, but that there, that building right in front of me, that's priory-ish right there. It even says priory on screen. I've flipping done it. I've made it to Iverstead. I did it. Deliver the amulet. I've arrived. Now I need to take it to Joffrey. Okay. I could do that. I just want to see, you know, what's around first. Ah, like for example, how do the locals feel about Joffrey? Do they actually like him? Do I want to give this guy the amulets? If he's not sleeping or eating, He'll be fussing with his books, I reckon, over in the Priory House. Oh, he's a massive nerd! Okay, fine, that's okay, he can have it. I'm not so sure about that Yugal Bellet. An odd fellow. And people have said there are strange noises coming from his house at all hours. Okay, investigate- Oh, okay, you don't like me for some reason, that's a bit mean. Maybe check out Yugal Bennett. Apparently, yes. There might be something weird going on in his place. So, okay, this town's going to have uh, mysteries, of course. And, uh, by any chance, is that... Yeah, that might be a forge, or it might be a mine over in this direction. I've immediately got distracted, and completely, it's a mine. Okay. There are mines in this game. And, oh, blimey. Okay, I thought Choro was just like a, you know, tiny village. But no, it's a proper walled town and everything. Okay, that's pretty exciting. It's got its own stables and... Okay, um, any chance you guys are willing to sell me a horse? Because all I want is somebody to sell me a horse. If you're looking to buy a horse, go inside and talk to Bongar. 
Oh, well, this sounds way more promising already. Okay, well, if I'm going to be delivering the Emperor's Amulet to Joffrey, I need to do it in style. Okay, it needs to be done on a horse. Oh, flip me, they cost more than a house. Okay, my house was a thousand gold. Apparently a horse is, well, it is a terrible house. I mean, that's not unfair. Okay, fine. Apparently we're arriving on foot after all. Okay, this is it. No horse, unfortunately, I was hoping for, yes. A more stylish arrival, but it's time. Yes, necklace, Joffrey, here you flipping go, mate. And here we go. Must be this monk at the end here. So, good news, buddy. Apparently, there is an heir, which I'm sure you're going to be very excited about. I'm Brother Joffrey. What do you want? And yes, indeed, the Amulet of Kings. I tried putting it on, but apparently I'm not king material. Well, this cannot be. No one but the Emperor is permitted to handle the Amulet. Let me see it. And yep, I see no reason not to hand it over. By the Nine. This is the Amulet of Kings. Who are you? How did you get this? What do you know of the Emperor's death? Okay, this is going to sound very suspicious, but... Just because I was there when he died, that does not mean I was involved, okay? He dreamt of me. I'm important, damn it. I'm the protagonist. As unlikely as your story sounds, I believe you. Only the strange destiny of Uriel Septim could have brought you to me carrying the Amulet of Kings. And yes, indeed. Prince of Destruction, close the jaws of oblivion. Start with Prince of Destruction. The Prince of Destruction he referred to is none other than Merun's Dagon, one of the lords of the demonic world of Oblivion. The Emperor's words, close shut the jaws of Oblivion, certainly suggest that he perceived some threat from Oblivion. But all the scholars agree that the mortal world is protected from the Daedra of Oblivion by magical barriers. Okay, so... Normally, there's a bit of a barrier, though conjuration people, necromancers, etc., kind of pull little things through, one at a time. But yes, this would be a proper full doorway. Demons can come through in as huge numbers as they want to. I can see how that might be bad, yes. I'm not sure. Only the Emperors truly understand the meaning behind the rituals of coronation. The Amulet of Kings is ancient. Saint Alicia herself received it from the gods. It is a holy relic of great power. When an emperor is crowned, he uses the amulet to light the dragon fires at the Temple of the One in the Imperial City. With the emperor dead and no new heir crowned, the dragon fires in the temple will be dark for the first time in centuries. It may be that the dragon fires protected us from a threat that only the emperor was aware of. Okay, the temple. So I did visit that and I wasn't sure what it was for. So, okay, now we know. And yes, indeed, um, arguably bigger news, uh, apparently there, like, is an heir, after all. I am one of the few who know of his existence. Many years ago, I served as captain of Uriel's bodyguards, the Blades. One night, Uriel called me into his private chambers. A baby boy lay sleeping in a basket. Uriel told me to deliver him somewhere safe. He never told me anything else about the baby, but I knew it was his son. From time to time, he would ask about the child's progress. Now it seems that this illegitimate son is the heir to the Septim throne, if he yet lives. So I'm guessing, given you don't want this information to get out until, you know, the kid is found, you want me to be the one to go find him now. His name is Martin. He serves Akatosh in the chapel in the city of Kvach, south of here. You must go to Kvach and find him at once. If the enemy is aware of his existence, as seems likely, he is in terrible danger. And please, let me know if there's anything you need. My resources here are limited, but I will help in any way I can. Okay, giant pile of free stuff. I flipping love it, though. Okay, what exactly is the dragon fight? I didn't see, like, any, like, I don't know, things that look like they'd be set on fire in that temple. It was just, well, there was a bowl in the center. Might have been that. The coronation of each new emperor is sealed when he uses the Amulet of Kings to light the dragon fires in the Temple of the One. The dragon fires of Akatosh remain lit until the death of the emperor. His successor then lights them anew upon ascending to the throne. With Emperor Uriel dead and no successor crowned, the Temple of the One will be dark for the first time in centuries. 
Okay, so it would have been lit before the Emperor died, but they put it out as soon as his death was confirmed. Got it. Now, let's focus on the important stuff here. Buddy, how much money have you got on ya? I keep a few things here in my chest to resupply travelling blades. Help yourself to whatever you need. Alright, now that that's a good starting point. Which which chest are we talking about? Ooh, steel arrows. Good stuff. A steel claymore. Two-handed, but a lot more powerful. A heavy gear if I need it. Right there. Whole bunch of potions. Oh, buddy. Buddy, buddy, buddy. I'm enjoying this. This is good stuff. Yes. Okay, bit more information, though. Martin, anything you can tell me about him? He is a priest in the chapel of Akatosh in Kavach. He never knew that he was Uriel Septim's son. Okay, so this is going to be a surprise to him too. Marvellous. And uh, the guy now... Oh, this rings a bell. He shows up in Skyrim in some capacity, doesn't he? But I can't remember how. The Daedra Prince of Destruction. An inveterate foe of all mortal races. He was involved with Jaeger Thahn's plot against the Empire years ago. It doesn't surprise me to find his hand in the current calamity. Okay, basically he's bad, got it, and uh, aha, with no emperor and no heir, at least for the time being, who's running the show? The Elder Council rules in the Emperor's absence by ancient tradition. Chancellor Akato heads the Elder Council and is the closest thing the Empire has to a leader right now. But the Blades answer only to the Emperor, of course. We are not an arm of the government. Okay, so the Blades are basically just doing their own business to secure the succession, which is why you want me to go and privately deal with the Martin business, but there is a civilian government in place. Man called Ocato, remember him, he might be important. So, my next step is clear. I need to go to Kavach, which I won't be doing, because I'm going to be honest, there is an entire bloody walled town right here. And also, there's a mine. Mines were exciting in Skyrim, they were a really good source of ore that was useful for crafting, which I'm still not sure whether it's actually a thing in this game, but I'm going to be honest. I need money, because if we're going to Kavach, I want to arrive in style. That means a horse, so I need a lot of bloody gold. Though of course there are alternatives, such as for example, I mean the horses aren't just standing here unattended, mostly unguarded, uh, could just help myself to a horse, and uh, I can't deny, I am rather curious, where does this road go? Because uh, there is the black road uh, going in this direction, uh, but there's no town at the end of it, so uh, what's at the end of this road? There must be something there, otherwise uh, why would the road be going in that direction? So, uh, okay, 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 next time... Brand new city, and we need to get rich in a hurry. I need 2,500 gold to pay for a bloody horse. So uh, that's going to take some doing, and it may well come to pass that, uh, yes, one way or another, the horse I acquire may not be acquired entirely honestly, shall we say. We shall flipping see. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been Oblivion. Thank you very much. And goodbye. Ah, we have got a gate key here, and then we have got ourselves. I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! This is gonna take all of my skill and cunning as a hunter to sort out. Die, you moving bastards! Die! Die! Go, go away. Go away, nobody likes you. That was a good idea till it wasn't.